You want to know how to insert hardware to your design? I'm Miraj C, and I'm going to help you with that. Hello, everyone. Um, so today we're going to look at how to insert hardware component to your drawing or design. Uh, it is something that can uh, be very tedious um, or something that is can be really fun. So I'll give you the, the tricks that I uh, I developed and discovered over the, uh, the few past months uh, while designing my, my uh, 3D printer that uh, made it uh, quite fun actually. So I've I have this simple body part over here um, that I use uh, on my printer on my 3D printer. So uh, right now what I'd like to do is insert uh, the hardware that will attach from or make the the, uh, the, the fastening from this face to this face and there's going to be actually a, a rod end uh, um, in, uh, in between those two faces. Okay, so I need a, let's just take a measurement, I'll do inspect and you can access the inspect uh, menu by here. So right now it gives me an 8.10 millimeter. So I know it's an M8 uh, fastener, M8 screw that will need to be there. And now to establish the length, I'm redoing my inspect for this diameter and this diameter. So it gives me a length of uh, 25. So considering the thickness of the bolt on the other side, uh, going with a 30 millimeter length hardware is going to be uh, what I need here. Okay, so we're going to be going to insert from the MacMaster car component catalog a screw and bolt with a socket head screw on the metric system for a dimension of M8 we said and I like to use uh, for those big ones steel standard partially threaded and for a length of 30 we said okay so with all those cho those choices McMaster car is giving me a few options so um, actually this one is only one option okay so it's not complicated so product detail over here you'll, you're gonna see a small uh, target sign with CAD on it you navigate to this and all the way to the bottom of this section you'll see 3D model uh, available and we want to have it in step. Save. Now this is going to be uh, inserting to the origin of your design this part. So you can try to bring it closer to your design or simply leave it there. It doesn't really matter because what we're going to do next is going to solve the positioning issue. Okay, so you see here that right now we have like a 40, it's a 45 degree angle or something between the two. So I could try to do a move command that would uh, actually, we're going to go with the component. Uh, so moving it from point to point and then trying to deal with the angle. Uh, that's how I used to do it at first, but it's it makes no sense because after that you can just simply drag one component and then they're, they're, they're misaligned. Okay, so the proper way to do this is using the joint function. So assembling component using the joint function. So some components have been moved because I've been dragging them around. Uh, it really doesn't matter at this point. So I'll just do uh, continue with the original uh, position of them. And what I want to do is select the first face of the component I want to move. And notice here, if I move my mouse, it triggers the selection of a bunch of things. Now, I want to go and select the center of that face. If I drag my mouse simply like this, I cannot go and select precisely my, my uh, axis target right here. So what you do is that you hold the control button of your keyboard and see what happens. I press control. And now if I move my mouse, only the points for this face becomes the one that can be selected. So hold control, select the middle target, and this is my joint uh, joint point. Okay. Now we want to have this face, same thing here. So if I drag my mouse across without holding control, a bunch of stuff is happening. Now I'm going on that face, 
hold control, I have either the middle of the surface or the center of uh, the axis. So this is what I want. And see what's happening. Bang. Your part is now in place. You could decide to offset this joint by a certain number, either direction, rotation. So that, those are all uh, options. Now I have a rigid, this is the sign for a rigid joint, but you could, we'll see it later with a bunch of other type of joints, either a slider joint, a re revolution to turn. Uh, there's even planar uh, joints that will be uh, uh, sliding in two different directions on one plane. Um, so right now what we want for this one is a rigid rigid joint. So I have my part like this. Okay, now see if I drag these two around they are moving together. They're joint. Okay, there's no way to displace that or, or undo that uh, that alignment by dragging stuff around. So when designing after that, it, it never gonna be shift. It never gonna shift. Okay. Now I want to have a bolt on the other side. Uh, not a bolt, but I'm sorry, a nut on the other side. So we're gonna go and pick from our once again McMaster car catalog. Insert McMaster car. I want to have a nut, regular hex nut, on the metric, and we do have an M8 right here now different uh, flanges uh, option i want regular we're going to go with steel black oxide and standard profile stretch that a bit see what's being proposed to us i want a simple like this so see that cabin is now here you select the part number and one selecting the part number then you have your cad option being showed go all the way to the bottom step is already selected since we we did one uh, before that save my nut is right there so see that nut has uh, a flange right here so where the uh, the pressure needs to be applied so we're going to go i have a shortcut on my space mouse right here for joint which is the equivalent from your menu here uh, let's continue with capture position so Control on my keyboard, select the center axis, and same thing here. Now, I don't want to have it at the end of the bolt. I want it to be on that surface. This is where it's going to be working. So the center right here, cross. Now, see this alignment? Now, it's not... I need to rotate it just by something around this value is fine. And now I have my bolt right there. So a bit short on the thread uh, side, but this is uh, the way this design is done. Um, you could go with a, a lower profile uh, nut that would be uh, better suited for this application. Okay. So rapidly insert measuring the hole you need. This is a 3.2, which is going to be an M3. I want to have distance wise this is going to be attaching another component so defining so a six millimeter would get me to the flush to this face going in master car metric m3 stainless socket head and we're gonna six millimeters gonna bring me flush. So let's go with a, a 10 just to, uh, for this example, 10 millimeter. Right here, my part is right there. Detail, save. Component is right there. I know I have three. So what do we do to multiply? Either you copy or we can simply use rectangular pattern. I want to have the latest component I inserted. It's not a face, it's a component. This component is what I want. My direction, we're gonna choose this axis. I wanna have three or I wanna have 10. 
So this could be a good way of uh, multiplying how many uh, components you want. So join my face right here. And I have my component there. And uh, you, you get, uh, you understand how to do it now. So have fun.